Now, I've given an awful lot of these trad cell Christians an awful lot of hassle because there's a problem of low standards in the movement in general. These people are not good enough, they're not savvy, they're not smart, they're not well educated, not well read, it's many times they're not even physically fit and stuff like this. And this stuff is simply not good enough and no amount of beliefs are going to be able to take that over. No amount of de declarations about the world are going to solve the fact that you are not good enough. Nonetheless, I think it's very important to be clear that I've always been a supporter of Christianity. You can look back to my channel for years now, years now, and I've never counter signaled it in a serious way. I'm not against Christ. I never speak ill of Jesus. I have a personal relationship with him. You know, I spend my time doing this stuff. Nonetheless, I am somebody who's intellectually honest. I'm able to engage with interesting ideas. I'm able to engage with alternate perspectives. I'm a big fan of Nietzsche, for example. Because Nietzsche is a genius. He's not going anywhere. He's the smartest man to come in the last 200 years. And no Christian has an answer with him unless they call him an incel. They can call him an incel and then say, I don't have to listen to him, but that's, you know, obviously not being sincere. That's literally definitional straw man, the most egregious kind, an ad hominem straw man to avoid actually confronting the ideas, which are so powerful that they basically put them into an existential crisis. This is coming from a position of weakness, not strength. I, on the other hand, have spent a long time studying Christianity. I love Christianity. I love Christ. I spent an awful lot of time trying to learn and understand it so I can actually see its weaknesses and quite a lot of clarity. Now, my support for Christianity was most beat into me by Carl Jung. I found a perspective in Jung that I just find so incredible that I think it's really important to, to take a grip with because I think it describes the problems we're having in our age to a T. Jung was very clear that we are entering into the stage of nihilism that Nietzsche described, ironically. Oh, Nietzsche was right again, here we go. Now, Jung realized that in this chaotic place, if we don't have stabilizing forces, we will be prone to being possessed by ideas, to being bewitched by isms, is what he said. Our minds would get pulled off towards communism, or fascism, or liberalism, or transgenderism, or Nietzscheanism, or Nietzscheanism, or something like this. And so Jung was saying that our egos, you know, our, our conscious minds are very vulnerable to this. We're, we're, we're very vulnerable to getting word bewitched by ideologies. And Jung, in response to this, realized that it's incredibly important to understand how the psyche is built, the architecture of the mind, the human mind. It's built like a, a structure and at the bottom of it, obviously at the bottom of the structure is the most stabilizing forces. And so he would say at the root of your psyche is the self, the super identity of who you are. And of course, Jung would say for Western man, the identity, the, the, the character who sits in the symbol, who sits in the throne of the self is Jesus Christ. And if you deny Jesus Christ, you're denying your own soul. You're putting yourself in incredible positions of danger where you're gonna spiral into all sorts of chaos. It's so stupid. It's so dangerous to do something like this. He heavily warned against that. He was like, do not deny Christ, my God. Look at Nietzsche, for example. Nietzsche went to war and tried to replace the symbol of Christ with the symbol of Dionysus. And it basically ripped into shreds before he could finish the job. It's important to understand that this is what Jung saw happening with naughty, nasty, freaky Nietzsche. This is what we're going through with the nihilism problem. European people are casting off Christ towards this sort of new potential, new future in this chaos. And they're all getting caught up and bewitched by all this nonsense as a consequence of this. And so Jung was saying that if you want to stabilize yourself and live a life of health and joy, go back to Christ, stay connected to Christ. But he also had a caveat to this. Don't think that you can do it in a rationalized philosophical way. The same ideological problems that come along with communism, fascism, fascism, liberalism, all this type of stuff. The same ideological problems that come wrong, along with flattering your word cell mind are the same issues with this. Instead, what he wanted you to do was have a ritual-based form of Christianity. He was a Protestant, but he actually encouraged all of the Europeans to go back to Catholicism because Catholicism was the most grounded in ritual as he saw it. It was the most ritualized and unconscious version of Christianity of them all. It was the one that never tried to justify itself. It tried to justify itself the least. Instead, it just presented operations, rituals, prestige, majesty. It is something that is very, very compelling and stabilizing as a consequence of this. And so Jung said, Christ is the seed of yourself. If you want stabilization through the era of nihilism, Catholicism is probably what you need to go to. Now, you'll notice that an awful lot of these new Christians, they're trying to rationalize this philosophically. They're turning into these same ideologues that Jung was warning about. The only one I've come across who has not been like this is um, Jonathan Pajot. I was chatting with him about this and people would start to
start to get into sort of the philosophical debates and all this stuff and he's like guys I don't can care bro like Christianity is a living religion we have living rituals and living operations this is <laughs> I'm, I'm happy I'm chuffed I'm good and that's actually the healthiest possible perspective that you can have because it's something that you engage with and you live you go out into the world and you do the things that are necessary to get married to get baptized to join a community to create art for something that's higher than yourself all of this stuff can be found in the church Nietzsche doesn't have any of that stuff where do you go to the Nietzsche church are, we, are you going to marry a Nietzschean girlfriend like none of that stuff is going to happen people are like where's the comprehensive church of Nietzsche it's like it doesn't exist man go and find something that brings you towards life that's probably going to be a church of some sort it's probably going to be some type of Christianity of some sort don't think that you can you can go into philosophy and escape this stuff but also don't think that you can go into philosophy in general and do this you're ultimately trying to make sure that you don't get stuck in your head in the era of nihilism and pull yourself out of that stuff and live in the world and do something pragmatic and do something intelligent which is engage with the world on life's terms to live a life in fact as Nietzsche would say a life affirming life to live and engage with life instead of becoming life denying and getting lost in a death cult and spiraling and becoming sterile that's the point of all this